So for my second part in my three-parter for talking about how to sort of reintroduce into D&D, not just for uh, yourself if you've been out of it for a while, but for people who have uh, kids and they want to introduce their kids to it, I'm going to talk about that this episode. The next episode will be about history, I think, the history of D&D, and uh, just sort of a primer so that uh, if you find yourself looking at things and you want to know what's going on, that might help. Now, D&D is a social game. This should go without saying, but sometimes people forget that. D&D is social. Um, you play it with other people. So when you're introducing it to a kid, the temptation is to buy him a, a, the box and say, look, here's this exciting thing. I was excited about it when I was your age. You should be excited. And then do nothing. Stand back and let them play. There's a problem with that. If they don't already have somebody to play with, they don't already have gamer friends, they'll have that cool box and they'll be like, okay, this is cool. And then... Nothing. Nobody to play with. They'll get bored, they'll go play a video game. <sighs> the key, I think, and this is based on my own experience and some of the things I've read about online and a couple other people that I've talked to over the years, one of the keys is that you have to make them think it's cool if you want them to take it up themselves. They will need to see that you know, how it's played. They will need to see the, the the aspects of it that make it cool. So my usual suggestion, uh, well, usual is a strong word, my suggestion is if they don't already have gamer friends, play yourself. Um, with your friends. Get together with your friends, have a D&D game, let the kid sit and watch and see what a game is supposed to be like. Let them see what D&D is. The sitting around the table, joking, eating pretzels, um, building imaginary worlds, part. Let them see that. Let them see you make a character. Let them see you and your friends having a good time. And then when you buy them the set, they'll be excited because they got the the cool thing that their their mom or their dad does. Uh and 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 you know all all of their adult friends do. So I think that's definitely a tack that you want to take when it ta when talking to kids about playing D&D. You don't want to just say this is exciting and then don't have anything to do it. And You'd be tempted to run a game for them, and that's doable. Uh, I have, I know of a friend who's run games for kids uh, that are sort of semi-related, you know, in that uh, they are good friends' kids and godfather and all that jazz. Um, and you can do that. You can definitely do that. There is a risk that... Uh, sometimes kids think their parents are not as cool, the, you know, and hanging out with their parents is kind of lame. So if you insist on them playing with you when they don't want to play, you could drive them further away from it. So you, you definitely want to get their interest in it before you start playing it or buying them anything for it or anything like that. Now that said, hmm, lighting, um... Both Pathfinder and 4th Edition before, uh, as well had starter sets that were ideal for, you know, giving to somebody who had never played before. Uh, those are definitely good choices. If you can find the old basic D&D sets, they are excellent. They're great ways to introduce uh, a kid to the game. They're simple, streamlined rules, 
and uh, you know gives them a, a foot in before they start getting into the the more complex rules, the more complex uh, settings, and so on, so forth. Another thing, get them their own dice. I have a rather impressive. First off, my stone dice box that I've had for ever. Um, seriously, I've had this for something like a decade now. So, great way to store your dice. And I have quite the collection, as you can see. When you're doing, when you're introducing a kid to the, to the game, you want them to have the accoutrement. You want them to have the props. You want them to have the things that are the physical, visceral, this is gaming to you. So buy them their own dice. Uh, if they want to play, buy them their own books. I know if you already have the books, it's cool, but letting them have their own thing gets them possession, them feel like they have power and, uh, you know, agency themselves. So giving them their own books probably a good idea. Giving them their own dice is a good idea. If you can afford it and you have the patience, help them get some miniatures and help them learn how to paint them. There's a whole thing to painting miniatures that people love. And I I think that uh, that's another way to help sort of get your kids invested if you're interested in getting your kids invested in the hobby. Uh, you know, I'm a weird case. I started playing when I was nine, and that was 30, yeah, 32 years ago, 33 years ago, somewhere in that range, and uh, shut up, I'm not that old. Anyways, um, and my mom got me my first set because she got tired of me getting into hers. She was playing with some old college friends. She has stopped, since stopped playing, but... Uh, I pretty much always had a constant source of people to play with. Uh, and, and that is really a really necessary element to, to raising a gamer. You gotta have them, they've gotta have somebody to play with. Um, so you, you need to, you know, not only get them excited, but if you can, see if you can get their friends excited. Uh, you know, offer to have gaming nights. Something like that. It's, you know, my, my mom was really cool about it. She would let my friends come over and we'd play on the porch and she'd make us dinner and it'd be cool. Something like that. Try and be the cool parent, the cool dad, the cool mom. And, uh, you know, make it easy on them. Make it easy for them to turn it into a, a chance to have a good social experience and good friendship. My last point I'll bring up, because... Uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of personal experience beyond my own sort of, I was a kid, uh, and seeing a few bits from, from afar. Uh, my last bit is, let them make mistakes. I can't count the number of game designers that I heard the phrase, yeah, I got this book and we were, you know, playing D&D &D and we were playing it all wrong. Let them make the mistakes. Let them screw up the game and, uh, you know, let them get the ro rules wrong. You can explain it to them later if you want, but if they're having fun and playing with the wrong rules, adapt. Really, adapt. Because this is how, you know, really passionate game designers kind of get their start. They, they, they kind of went, oh, you know, I made up my own rules. And then I found out there were other rules. And I, you know, changed over to them, but I got the bug for making my own rules. A lot of game designers get their start that way. So don't freak out if they get the rules wrong a little. I know that's kind of hard for geeks to do, to not freak out when they get it wrong. The internet is filled with wrong people, after all. But try. Uh, that, uh, first off, coming down on somebody for getting it wrong is a negative experience for them and it might turn them off to the game. And two, 
as long as they're having fun, it's not really wrong. Just, just going to put that out there. Uh, you know, D and D is the go-to for a lot of people uh, for introducing people to gaming because it is the icon. It's been around the longest. It's got the most players. Okay, fair enough. Um, you might try some other games if you're interested in introducing the gaming, but maybe are looking to find a a different inroad. Um, Fate Accelerated is pretty good for that. Uh, um, actually, one of the the better ones from what I hear, because I had a friend who, who did this, ran a game for some kids. Uh, Mouse Guard apparently is very popular. Works really well for that sort of thing. So you might try that. Uh, and, uh, you know, don't be afraid to try other games. I played lots of games. D&D was my first, but I played Marvel Super Heroes back in the day, Star Frontiers, Top Secret was a thing. There are a lot more games now. All the genres you could want. If the kid's excited about superheroes, there are a dozen superhero games out there. Seriously, you can find one that's cool. Anyways, that's my advice on getting a kid introduced to D&D uh, &D and gaming in general. Uh, you know, if you have experience with this, let me know. And uh, I will, my third part, uh, which will be a little bit longer, will be about the history of D&D &D and, you know, just the sort of a basic primer for people who are not as big a D&D &D and game nerd as I am. Anyway, uh, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Subscribe, like, the whole, you know, the usuals. I'll talk to you later. Bye.